Look okay, there. we're done now. Are we done massaging your ego with that song? Are we done? Good, good. I become, I become. All right, enough. I job. What is, what is, what is, first off, I don't like you anyway. Why are you in here? What is this? What is this? Uh, you need to calm down a bit, Eddie. I can't calm okay, down. Okay. I don't know that. Listen, I arranged for the security to be here because I want us to talk to each other like men, okay? I don't want us to fight each other like common street thugs, which I know you consider yourself to be. You if you me... try it tonight, they're going to take care of it. I'm just Are you calling you. me a street thug? Yes. You don't even know what that means, dog. No, you're lucky. I... Oh. This dude, this dude. Give me a second, because in all honesty, I have no idea why we're doing this. I'm not a sports entertainer, Chris. I'd rather just fight you. You know what, since you're not gonna fight me right here, hey, Tony Khan, hey, do me a favor, get me uh, Statlander and Willow Nightingale or something. Give me two women wrestling, please. Let's do something here. Let this is a wrestling company, not a sports entertainment company. My man, go down the block. Well, uh, like you said, we are just down the road from Stanford, so maybe I will give you a little sports entertainment. Except I guarantee that this sports entertainment will actually be entertaining. Because... Because I'm gonna tell you a story, Eddie. A story about Eddie Kingston. When I first heard that you were coming to AEW, Eddie, everybody in the locker room was so excited. Eddie Kingston's coming! Eddie Kingston's coming! And I was thinking to myself, who the hell is Eddie Kingston? I'm being honest. I mean, I, I keep an eye on what's going on in the indie scene. I had never heard of you before. As a matter of fact, I thought maybe they were talking about Eddie Edwards. And then, and then, and then I saw you, and I realized why I'd never heard of you before. It's because you look like a jobber. But wait, but wait. But then I saw your match against what's his name, and I heard your promo, and I realized I might not have heard of you before, but this guy is good. This guy is very good. This guy's got something really special. He's got what it takes to go to the top. And I told you that just a few days later. I even told you it wouldn't be long before you became a huge baby face in AEW, because the people are gonna love you, and I was right. What's a baby face? No, I don't. And it was such a feel-good story, Eddie, after 20 years of busting your ass on the indies and getting over and overcoming your physical and mental issues, you finally, after all those years, signed a contract with AEW and you made it to the big time at the age of 38 years old. And everybody was so happy for you. Eddie deserves it. We're excited for Eddie. Everybody that is but me. I didn't give two shits about your sob story, and I didn't give two shits about you. And I'll tell you the reason why. I realized that you're jealous of Chris Jericho. You didn't make it to the big time until you were 38 years old, but you know that I made it to the big time when I was 22 years old. Worldwide, man. By the time I was 38, I'd already made evented pay-per-views. I had toured the world headlining arenas. I had been a multiple time world champion and I'd made millions of dollars. You're jealous of me, Edward. All right, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna keep oh, going. Go ahead, hold on. The reason why you're jealous is deep down inside, you don't believe you can ever achieve what Chris Jericho has achieved, and deep down inside, you don't think you can ever be at my level. Am I right? 
Well, first off, Christopher, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want? You talked about all this main event and all this stuff. You want a cookie? You want a cookie for that? Because guess who doesn't care? The only reason why you renovated all these places and done all this stuff was because, let's be honest, I wasn't there. See, I'm a different type of cat, dog. I'm not like you. I don't leech off people like you do. I'm not like the rest of the cornies that lie and talk to the promoters to get other people's legs cut out from under them. No, I tell the promoter to F off if he wants me to do that because I'm going to do things my way and I'm going to be me till I die. You understand? And I got to look at myself in the mirror. And now you're out here doing this and talking about that. You know what, Chris? I don't want to talk to you because all you're doing is sucking the blood out of me and my blood's too tough for you, dog. My heart don't pump Kool-Aid, God. You know what I mean? You may do it to the young guys back there and tell them, hey, kid, you got a bright future. Look, team up with me. <laughs> I'd rather do things on my own. And you know what, Chris? You know what, man? I want to fight. How about it? Me and you at the pay-per-view. How about it, Chris? Come on. I'm gonna answer that question, but first I wanna ask you a question of my own, Eddie. Have you ever heard of achievephobia? Do you know what that means? No, I'm not, I got a GED, I don't. All right. <laughs> it means the fear of success, and that is you to a T. You're terrified to make it to the top. You're terrified to make it to the mountain, the level, the mountain that I live on, because if you did, you would fall instantly right off the other side, and you know it. Because you consider yourself, you consider your destiny to be one of a failure. You know why? I read all the stories about you online. I know your family's Careful. history. Careful. I know your family's history. You said it to the world. Your very first hero was your uncle, and he was a failure. You believed in your own father, and he was a failure. And deep down inside, you think you're a failure as well. I've seen guys like you come and go, Eddie, and I can tell you exactly what your problem is. You can't win the big one. You can't win the big one. And when you challenge me for revolution, let me tell you something, brother. In this company, I am the big one. Me, not Moxley, not Danielson, not Punk, not the heavyweight champion, Hangman Page. Chris Jericho is the big one in this company. The influencer, the demo god, Le Champion. And if you want to challenge me at Revolution, man, you got it. Jericho, Kingston, May, May 6th at the pay-per-view, March 6th at the pay-per-view, you got it. But like I said, Eddie, okay, fine. But you can't win the big one, and you won't. But I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this right now. If you do manage to beat me, Chris Jericho, I swear to God, I will look you in the eye, I will shake your hand, and I will tell you that you have my utmost and ultimate respect. Because that will mean that I helped you get over the one thing that's holding you back, and that's the fear of success. You dig? <laughs> Let me give you a warning, okay? We got the match, great. But don't give me the Chris Jericho that did the Mimosa match. Don't give me the Chris Jericho that got pushed off a cage by MJF. Give me the Chris Jericho that was the first world champion in this company. Give me the Chris Jericho that bled buckets in Tennessee. Let me get the Chris Jericho that got respect from one of my heroes, Senru, and war and wrestled out there. Give me the Chris Jericho that turned WCW upside down. Give me the Chris Jericho that uh, your close friend Levesque hated. Give me that. Because if you don't, I'm going to eat you alive.
I'm going to give you that Chris Jericho and so much more, Eddie Kingston, and I'll say it again. I can see it in your eyes right now. You don't believe that you can beat me. You don't believe that you can win the big one. And your opinion of yourself deep down inside is the same opinion that I have of you. You are nothing more than a loser. And you always will be. You can't win the big one, ever. Hit my music. Wow, Jericho planting the seeds of self-doubt in the head of Eddie Kingston. Hell, I want to see it now, man. But what we're gonna wait. Up. Yeah. We're gonna wait till March 6th. It ain't gonna be pretty, maybe bowling too ugly, but it will be a physical son of a gun.